Hello again. In this particular lecture, we want to go ahead and tackle the connective tissues, the muscle tissues, and finally, nervous tissue. So connective tissues are a little different than epithelial tissue. Um, they're located all throughout the body. You know, they're found in your fat, blood, bone, ligaments, tendons, and cartilage. And uh, they have a little different function than um, epithelial tissues. They function to bind uh, epithelial tissues and bind other tissues. They support. Um, they're going to be uh, protective. They serve as frameworks. Um, for example, your bones are a framework for your body. They fill in spaces. Fat does that. It uh, stores lipids. And uh, they produce blood cells. They protect against infection. And uh, they can repair tissue damage. So a wide variety of functions um, these connective tissues serve. Their characteristics, uh, you know, are, are very different than epithelial tissues. So, for example, they're surrounded by an extracellular matrix. Um, this matrix is, uh, is made of, uh, of what we call fibers and ground uh, substance. The fibers are different kinds of proteins, and the ground substance can, can range from calcium all the way up to water. Um, they have a good blood supply except for cartilage. And, uh, and dense connective tissue, making up uh, tendons and ligaments. Um, but for the most part, they have a pretty decent blood supply. So these characteristics are very different than, uh, say, the epithelial tissues. Um, they're derived, so these tissues are derived from what we call embryonic mesenchyme. mesenchyme. So they're actually derived from a different tissue than what epithelial tissues come from embryonically. So when we look at, uh, at the structural elements of connective tissue, they are made of uh, the ground substance. We'll talk about what that is, fibers and cells. And their composition and arrangement of these particular things varies in the different kinds of connective tissue. tissue. So we can build different kinds of connective tissues using different ground substances, different fibers, and different kinds of cells. So ground substance is, uh, is unstructured material. It fills spaces between cells. It may be fluid, semi-fluid, gelatinous, or even calcified if you look at bone. And the components vary depending upon the ground substance for that particular tissue. But, uh, you know, one of the large components of ground substance is typically water. Uh, you can also find various kinds of uh, um, glycosaminoglycans, or GAGs is what we use for short. Um, these GAGs uh, can range anywhere from hyaluronic acid, uh, chondroitin sulfate, dermatin sulfate, keratin sulfate. Um, so these are some of the components that you would uh, see. Um, these materials are, uh, are polysaccharides, so they're sugars. And uh, it, I don't know if you're familiar with snake venoms, but one of the components of snake venoms, uh, if, if you look at snake venoms around here, um, is uh, hyaluronidase. Hyaluronidase is an enzyme that digests hyaluronic acid. And so when these snakes, when some of these snakes bite, bite you and inject venom into you, they're basically digesting the ground substance, which is uh, kind of holding together some of the tissue uh, components. So uh, that's kind of cool that the, there's a venom that actually works in that kind of way. So these gags are, are polysaccharides. They trap water, uh, which helps to make the ground substance more gelatinous as opposed to solid. Um, they attach to proteoglycans. Um, which will help you to make a matrix uh, or, uh, uh, you know, uh, give the ground substance structure. Um, they do have, uh, we also have as components of the ground substance adhesion proteins like fibronectin. Fibronectin will connect other components of the uh, ground substance together and, uh, and uh, connect it to the surface of the cells. So, um, so these things are really important. You know, some people even take these as supplements. You know, when you're, when, when you have like arthritis and things, people think that you can take chondroitin sulfate and various things as supplements to help repair and and uh, and safeguard uh, those uh, those joints. And there's just some uh, some uh, graphics showing you um, some of the components of of this uh, ground substance. So here you have hyaluronic acid. There's linker proteins, keratin sulfate, uh, very chondroitin sulfate. So you can see that uh, the hyaluronic acid is forming like a, a, a scaffolding that all these uh, other various proteins and components are attached to. And again, it gives it property. It gives properties to that particular connective tissue that this particular substance is found in. So you can see if a snake venom came in and ate hyaluronic acid, uh, it's going to really diminish the matrix 
um, that is in between these tissues and therefore cause the tissues not to function correctly. Um, this is that fiber, fibronectin, which is a linker, so it's linking the various ground substance to the cell membrane. And it's just a, another graphic showing you how complex it actually is. So just uh, all the fibers making up that ground substance on the outside. <clears throat> well, you know, these tissues can have different kinds of ground substance and they can have different kinds of fibers. So collagenous fibers are, are really strong and they're made of proteins called collagen. And what this does will add great strength to the body parts. So when you think of a tendon or a ligament, I don't know if you've ever been had a chicken nugget before, and sometimes chicken nuggets are made where they have tendons or ligaments in them, that chewy part that you get to, that's going to be uh, made of lots of collagen fibers. There's also elastic fibers, which are made of the protein elastin, and these are stretchy, and they add flexibility to different types of connective tissues. So, you know, your skin's real stretchy, your blood vessels are stretchy, your lung tissue's stretchy. All of this is going to have connective tissues with the elastic fibers that are in them. There's also reticular fibers. These are thin collagenous fibers that form a supportive network in blood vessel walls and in some other tissues. So again, a connective tissue can have different kinds of ground substance, different kinds of, of, of uh, arrangements of these fibers, and also different kinds of cells. So the major cell types that you'll find in connective tissues are the fibroblasts. These are kind of star-shaped, kind of. They're large, and they're going to produce the fibers that are deposited in the matrix of the connective tissue. So they're helping to form that ground substance. There's also macrophages. Macrophages are really important cells in connective tissue. What they do is they wander around and they function as a scavenger. So they remove particles. You know, if you have a tattoo, they actually ate the tattoo ink. Um, they are defensive, so they kill invading organisms. So particulate matter, any invading organisms that come in, macrophages are wandering around and eating those particular things up. We also have mast cells. These are located near blood vessels um, in connective tissue. And uh, they actually produce chemicals that prevent blood clotting and promote swelling or inflammation. So if you ever cut yourself and you get a swelling there, that's a mast cell that's producing chemicals that, uh, that allows your blood to flow freely to that area. And uh, so what, what that's trying to do is to protect you from invading organisms, but sometimes that swelling can really be damaging, especially if it's around something like a spinal cord. Um, you know, it can put pressure on a spinal cord and actually kill the tissues. Um, these mast cells are also associated with allergies. So if you have allergies, it's your mast cells are sensing pollen or something coming into your body, and uh, it produces these chemicals, which cause swelling and mucus production and, and uh, and, they, and all the symptoms that are associated with allergies. So some allergy medicine, when you take it, knocks out those mast cells from producing uh, one of the chemicals. is called histamine. So you take an antihistamine to stop the production of histamine, and that blocks a mast cell from working. White blood cells include um, are going to be found in some of these tissues. They include neutrophils and eosinophils and lymphocytes and basophils. Uh, but we'll study these more intensely when we do the... Um, when we do the uh, blood. And then there's uh, adipocytes. These are, uh, these are fat cells, so they store uh, lipids inside of them. This is showing you the complexity of a, of a connective tissue. Uh, you can see here a macrophage wandering around. Here's a fibroblast. Here we have a lymphocyte involved in, uh, in some kind of immune reaction. Fat cells, mast cells involved in allergy. Here's a neutrophil wandering around. Uh, they're they're going to be part of our immune system, cleaning up bacteria. Of course, we have blood vessels, and uh, and we have the fibers, and uh, you can see the three different kinds of fibers here: collagen fibers, elastic fibers, and reticular fibers. And then we have the ground substance. So all of this collectively makes up this particular type of tissue. And again, your collections of cells can be different, and your fibers can be different, and your ground substance can be different, making up the different kinds of connective tissues. So mature uh, connective tissue, um, we're going to talk about loose, dense cartilage, bone, and the liquid connective tissues.
and we'll start with uh, with the loose connective tissue. It's a beautiful tissue under the microscope. I really look forward to you seeing it. This is artist rendition here. Here's a photo micrograph taken uh, from a picture taken from the microscope. And uh, this loose connective tissue um, is also known as areolar connective tissue. And uh, it's composed mainly of fibroblasts that are embedded in a gel-like matrix of collagenous and elastic fibers. So you can have elastic fibers, collagenous fibers, your ground substance um, is going to uh, be uh, gelatinous, and you can see lots of fibroblasts that are creating the fibers that are making up the, um, the ground substance. So uh, functions to hold and nourish epithelial tissue, so you would oftentimes find areola right underneath the skin. And uh, that's one type. Areolar is one type of loose connective tissue. Another type of loose connective tissue is adipose tissue. So adipose tissue is going to be composed of cells that store fat droplets. So inside of this fat cell would be a fat droplet. And you can see the membrane of the cell right here. Okay, so this is what they look like under a photomicrograph. Typically the, the nucleus is pushed to the edge because you're filling this thing up with fat the nucleus gets put, pushed to the periphery or edge of the cell. It functions to protect and cushion organs, it insulates, uh, and it stores uh, fat, which is an energy source. So it does cushion your organs, like your eyes. Your eyes don't roll around in your sockets because of the cushioning of fat. Um, there is some insulation properties to it. Other animals, you know, like polar bears, have a lot more of it, and uh, fat storage is pretty important. Um, you're, if you've ever seen somebody starve to death, they'll actually take and begin to use their fat all throughout their body and their eyes will sink back into their eye sockets because your eyes are packed in fat. Uh, it's located in, in what we call the, uh, the subcutaneous layer or some books use a hypodermis of the skin. It's the lowest layer of skin. Uh, of course, the back of the eyeball, as I just mentioned, and uh, surrounding joints. It also packs in your organs and your abdominal cavity as well. And then we also have reticular connective tissue. This is composed of a gel-like matrix of reticular fibers, so they're very specific. And uh, we have lots of fibroblasts in this tissue, lots and lots of white blood cells, lots of mast cells, and macrophages. And it's located in your spleen. Your spleen is an organ that's part of your uh, immune system, and it's a filter of your blood. Uh, it's also found in your bone marrow, your red bone marrow and uh, lymph nodes. So you can see each of these structures is part of um, the immune system. Of course your bone marrow produces blood cells. So when you look at that tissue it looks like this with the reticular fibers and uh, with the various kinds of cells that are spread throughout. Okay, All those cells we just talked about. That's a pretty important uh, tissue especially in your spleen, your bone marrow, and your lymph nodes. Well, those were your loose connective tissues. Let's talk about your dense connective tissues. So um, dense connective tissue, it has very few fibroblasts. If you look up here, here's one, two, three. So there's very few cells, um, but they are surrounded by very close, closely packed collagenous and elastic fibers. So you can see kind of the wave of fibers. There's just tons and tons and tons of fibers in this tissue. Um, this is what it looked like under um, the, uh, the microscope. It functions to make really strong tissues, able to withstand pulling forces. And you will find dense connective tissues in your tendons, your ligaments, and the white part of your eye called the sclera. If you just close your eyeball and push on your eyeball, um, you can feel how tough the eyeball uh, is. So that white part of the eye called the sclera encircles the whole eye um, and uh, is, is, very part, uh, is very, very tough. Now the sclera is not um, in the very, very front of the eye. You have a, um, a cornea that's made of a different kind of tissue. But uh, that white part of the eye is really tough, made of a dense connective tissue. And this is just a little chart. I, I found this in one source of here showing you a description of the connective tissue, function, location uh, of, these, uh, of these dense connective tissues. So this would be a dense regular connective tissue here, what that would look like and where it's located. And this is a, um, a, dense, uh, a dense connective tissue that's elastic in, in um, nature. So if you look at the blood vessel that comes out of the heart that has great pressure applied to it from the squeezing of the chambers of the heart, 
um, it has to have the ability to stretch. So our elastic connective tissue is going to, um, our dense regular or elastic connective tissue is going to be found in the aorta of the heart. And it's goes like this, tons and tons and tons of elastic fibers. And then we have a dense irregular connective tissue. Um, this is going to be able to withstand tensions exerted in many different directions. You can see it's making up the fibrous joint capsule that uh, encapsulates a joint. And uh, it's going to have kind of an intermediate effect, a little bit less of the, um, uh, of, uh, the, the fibers. But, um, but they will have enough fibers, collagen and elastic, to give it some flexibility, um, but, um, but also um, um, some um, strength as well. Okay, so cartilage is composed of uh, chondrocytes uh, or cartilage cells, and they're embedded in a gel-like matrix. Um, it's very smooth looking when you look at it under a microscope. So here's all that ground substance that's gelatinous, and then you have your cells that are in these little spaces called lacunae, and the cells are actually inside those spaces. Here you can see a beautiful picture of, of the lacunae and the cells inside and the ground substance on the outside. There are three types of cartilage. We have hyaline cartilage. Uh, hyaline cartilage is uh, a matrix composed of uh, co collagenous fibers. It's a really strong kind of, uh, kind of cartilage. Um, it's really tough, and you'll be surprised. We'll do a chicken wing lab where you'll cut through it, and uh, you'll see how tough that actually is. Uh, it's located on the ends of your bones, uh, the rings around your trachea. If you just take your, your finger and rub it down your the front of your the anterior part of your throat, you'll feel those little rings, uh, and those are made of hyaline cartilage. And then the tip of your nose, so the very tip of your nose is going to be made of that hyaline cartilage. It is tough, and sometimes in a chicken nugget you can grab a hold of one of those and chew it around. So um, hyaline cartilage, very very tough, made of collagenous fibers, and it's got a beautiful arrangement to it, as you'll see under the microscope. We also have elastic cartilage. This is a, a type of a cartilage that has uh, tons and tons of elastic fibers uh, in, the, in the matrix. And uh, it's located in your uh, external ears and uh, parts of your larynx or voice box that need some flexibility. So your ears and your voice box. And then finally, we have fiber cartilage. Fiber cartilage is composed of a matrix of mainly collagenous fibers. So you're thinking tough and you take, you're thinking strength when you see that uh, collagenous. And uh, so where these are located are the intervertebral discs. Inter means between the vertebrae. So these little discs in between your vertebrae, um, they pad the vertebrae. Uh, you need something that's really tough. And fiber cartilage is what you would find there. Between the bones of your knees, so um, so you definitely find fiber cartilage there to protect from when you walk around all the weight of your body on those bones coming together. Um, and then there's a connection between your pelvic bones uh, called the symphysis pubis, and this is a cushion between those bones. And uh, so that fiber cartilage can be dissolved during uh, during labor, so that the pelvic bones can be you know become uh, more widespread, and the baby can come out of the out of the birth canal more easily, and they can attach, reattach afterwards. One of my favorite connective tissues is the bone. Bone is awesome looking under the uh, under the microscope, photomicrograph over here. And uh, so bone is composed of osteocytes. Osteo means bone, site means cell. So there, there's bone cells that are surrounded by a matrix of, of very tough collagen fibers and mineral salts. So we have a lot of calcium carbonate and calcium phosphate and all kinds of different uh, salts that are that are found in um, in that matrix. So it's calcified. It's tough. Now, if you take a bone and you put it in vinegar and dissolve it, all the calcium carbonate and phosphate will dissolve out, leaving just the collagenous fibers. It'll still look like a bone, but it'll be flexible. So um, so if you if you take a look, each of these little black things that you see are the places where the uh, bone cells are actually sitting okay and all the rest of this stuff out here is going to be the ground substance of course bone tissue is located in your bones and it functions to protect support and give great strength to the human body so awesome tissue we'll study it more in depth when we do the skeletal system uh, but uh, here we're just introducing it to you 
Yeah, so a liquid uh, connected tissue would be blood. It's composed of, uh, of cells such as white blood cells. So here's a white blood cell. It's called a neutrophil, and here's a white blood cell. It's a lymphocyte, and uh, it's also um, it's also uh, composed of red blood cells. So you can see each of these little circles here is a red blood cell, and uh, even platelets. I can see one little platelet there. I can see one little platelet right there. So it's made of these little things called platelets, and the matrix is a liquid matrix. Uh, so it's called plasma. And uh, blood, uh, you know, functions to transport substances to and from all the cells of the body through blood vessels. And this is just showing you the cellular part. So these are what red blood cells look like. And we'll go through and we'll study all these blood cells here. We're going to study monocytes and neutrophils and lymphocytes and basophils and eosinophils. We'll know all the jobs of those. But unfortunately, you'll have to wait till second semester to learn that. And these little things called platelets are cell fragments, and what they do is they help to stick together. They actually adhere together and form a blood clot so that you can stop uh, a leaking blood vessel. So let's put uh, epithelial tissues and connective tissues together, and we'll form some coverings and lining uh, membranes. So a covering or lining membrane is composed of at least two primary tissues. So we have uh, epithelium and we have connective tissue that are bound together. Now, since these, since these membranes uh, uh, are going to be made of more than one type of tissue, they are considered to be simple organs because by definition, an organ is, um, is several different t tissues working together to perform a function. And I would like to talk to you today about cutaneous, mucous, serous, and synovial membranes. These are four main types of membranes that are found throughout the body. So a cutaneous membrane is found in your skin, so it covers uh, the, the whole surface of your skin, and it comprises the uh, integumentary system. And uh, it's made uh, typically of stratified squamous epithelium. Remember, that's many layers of flattened cells that almost look like bricks of a wall. And, uh, and, and then the underlying connective tissues uh, are part of this cutaneous membrane. Uh, it is a dry membrane, so all the surface of your skin is, is typically dry. And uh, this just represents, uh, of course, all over the surface of the skin uh, is representing the cutaneous membrane. The mucous membrane is also known as mucosae, and, uh, which would be the plural. And uh, they line body cavities that are open to the exterior. So, for example, the digestive and respiratory tracts, at least a part of it that's open to the exterior, now remember, if this is the esophagus going down to your stomach, when food is inside of the esophagus, it's actually still external to the body. It's not until the small intestine absorbs the uh, food that it actually becomes part, it becomes, it comes inside of you. So all the way from the mouth, all the way to the anus, stuff that's in that tube is exterior to the body. Okay, so, so it will be a mucous membrane. And your respiratory tracts uh, are the same way. Air that comes into your lungs is still outside your body until it comes across the lungs and goes into your bloodstream. So these, uh, these mucous membranes line your mouth, your nose, your throat, um, and of course all of your um, digestive tract. And they may secrete uh, mucus to help things uh, move through. So in, in your mouth, you secrete mucus to help food move through. In your nose and throat, you secrete mucus to trap particles um, so they don't get down into your lungs. So here is a great example uh, of a drawing of the mucosa. So uh, you can see all the blue represents the, the mucous membrane. You have it all in your respiratory tracts. You have it all in your digestive tracts all the way down and in your nose and mouth cavity. Serous membranes are going to um, uh, be made of simple squamous uh, epithelium that rests on thin areolar connective tissue. And they line the internal body cavity walls. They also are going to cover the internal organs. So remember, the parietal serous membrane makes up the wall. The visceral um, parietal the visceral um, serous membrane makes up uh, the covering over an internal organ. 
They do secrete serous fluid in between the layers as a lubricating fluid to reduce friction and allow for the uh, organs to move and to, and to just squeeze through and to, and to have some flexibility. It forms the inner lining, uh, uh, cavity linings and covers organs of the thorax and the abdomen. So as we just described, it covers organs, makes up the walls of, of cavities. And here's a couple good examples. Here we have the parietal pleura and the visceral pleura. So the parietal makes up the wall and the visceral actual cover, actually covers the, uh, the organ. And we're talking about the lung here. Of course, the visceral pericardium covers the heart. The parietal pericardium makes up the wall of the pericardial cavity. And we have the parietal peritoneum, which is the wall of the abdominal cavity. And the visceral peritoneum is covering the actual organs, the digestive organs. Now, synovial membrane is composed entirely of connective tissues. So there's no epithelial tissues that are found here. And uh, these are going to align joint cavities. So down here, you have uh, bone one, bone two. They come together. It almost looks like a knee joint. And uh, they come together. And you can see that there is, um, there is uh, the, this membrane that makes up this joint so it goes all the way around. There's a membrane that covers around and goes all the way around. And, uh, and uh, that's a synovial membrane. And a synovial membrane forms synovial fluid, um, which is the lubricating fluid that's inside of here. Okay. So this is a very complex arrangement here. But if you didn't have synovial fluid, these things, these things wouldn't slip past each other very easily. Um, and uh, this particular structure is contained in a capsule, a fibrous capsule that goes all the way around in three dimensions, all the way around, even through around the back, uh, to, to encapsulate or cover this up. Sometimes you can have too much synovial fluid and they have to drain it. Sometimes you have very little of it, and that could be a problem too because of friction that develops. Okay, let's move on to muscle tissues and kind of wrap this up. So muscle tissues are located uh, um, in uh, your muscles, your heart, your blood vessels, surrounding digestive organs. They do contract, so they create movement because of contraction. They contain protein fibers that shorten under the control of nerves, and they typically have uh, a good uh, blood supply. Sometimes your muscle tissue is under control of hormones, uh, and sometimes they're under control of other things like stretching, but most of the time nerve, nervous uh, impulses will control them. And we do have three types in the human body. We have skeletal, smooth, and we have cardiac. And we'll start with uh, the skeletal muscle tissue. Um, it's a beautiful tissue under the microscope. I think you'll enjoy watching it or looking at it. Uh, it's composed of many parallel rows of string-like cells that have alternating light and dark striations. So this is a muscle cell here. This is a muscle cell here, so this whole thing is one muscle cell. We also call them muscle fibers, muscle cell, muscle fiber, interchangeable terms. But you can see they have light and dark striations through them, and, and we'll see why that's so when we do the um, muscular system. They are multinucleated, so there's more than one nucleus in each cell, and they're really long and large cells. They function to move bones, and they're voluntary. They're under your volition. They are under your control. Smooth muscle tissue is going to be composed of almost spindle-like cells. They're kind of like pinched at the ends. They do not have striations, and they are not multinucleated. They don't have more than one nucleus per cell. They function to move through, uh, food through the digestive tract. So your um, digestive organs, such as your esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, have smooth muscle tissue. Uh, your urinary bladder. It's going to have smooth muscle tissue so that it can contract and release urine. And uh, the uterus is uh, made of smooth muscle tissue as well. And that will contract during childbirth to um, expel the baby. And lastly, we have cardiac muscle tissue. It is striated, and, uh, and, but it's branched. Um, so if you take a look at some of the differences between it and, and, uh, and uh, uh, skeletal muscle tissue, it does have striations, which is a similarity. Um, typically, it does, it's not multinucleated. It's one nucleus per cell. The cells aren't as long, um, 
and they have intercalated disks. These are little connections between cells. So this would be cell A, this would be cell B. This intercalated disk would be a connection point between them. Here's uh, cell C, and uh, there will be gap junctions in between them where they can communicate information in between. Um, and they, uh, typically, you can see they are branched, so they have branching points, mm -hmm. okay, which skeletal muscle tissue didn't have. And of course, it, it's found in your heart, and it makes your heart pump blood. And lastly, our last tissue is the nervous tissue, and uh, this is this is going to be a very generic overview of this. There's all different kinds of nervous tissues, um, but uh, generically, we'll just go over some of the parts to the nervous uh, tissue. So nervous tissue is made of uh, neurons, and it's made of supporting cells called neuroglial cells. Neuro means nerve, glia means glue. So these cells help to give structural support and bind to these nerve cells and, and, and help support them. If you look at the graphic up here, here's a neuron. It's a huge cell. It has these little branches called dendrites coming out. Okay, It also will have a, one main branch coming out called an axon. Uh, it has a cell, you know, uh, a nucleus. And, uh, and then you can see surrounding it, and also outnumbering, typically 10 to 1, are the neuroglial cells. These are the supporting cells. The supporting cells have a wide variety of jobs. They, they nourish the neuron. They protect the neuron. They insulate the neuron. Um, they form a support of the neuron. So they do all kinds of different jobs. Nervous tissue allows you to sense the environment, think, feel, control body functions, move. Uh, it's involved in homeostasis. Lots of wide variety of things. Um, the nervous system does. Nervous tissues found in your brain and spinal cord and in the nerves that go throughout your body. So nervous tissues found just about everywhere in, in the human body. And that's just a beautiful nerve cell. We're going to spend a lot of time talking about the nervous system and we'll understand that you know that these dendrites receive information and this axon sends information to other nerve cells but we'll look at its very complex structure and uh, and talk about that when we do the nervous system chapters. Well, that's a little bit about connective tissues, muscle tissue, and nerve tissue. So uh, I expect you to be an excellent student like you know you want to be. Get that grade you want. The way you do that is by studying hard, studying frequently in small doses. You want to make sure you keep up with your reading, your study guides. You want to keep up with your doing your root words. You want to ask good questions. And, uh, and, and, and make sure um, you're, you're doing everything you can to help yourself. Okay, so if there's anything I, think I can do to help you, make sure you contact me. Be happy to help you in any kind of way. So until next time, uh, we'll uh, see you uh, later.